Hi, it's Stacy with So Steady, and we have a surprise guest here. Um, but we are live for our last day of all things holidays here at So Steady. And I think it's going to be one of the more exciting days if you like giveaways. Um, but we have got the amazing Donnell McAdams back with us to finish out our All Things Holidays for 2021 and wish you guys all into the amazing weekend of Christmas festivities and give you some last minute craft ideas. So she's going to be doing some demoing for us today. Uh, she showed me a couple of the holiday projects that she's uh, been recently working on, including a Facebook Live she just did uh, the other day. And like I said, we're going to have some amazing giveaways in store for all of you. And those are all going to be live giveaways today. So let's go ahead and get started. So Donnell, what are we looking at right now? Well, this is one of those things that I did like a year ago, and it was a mystery project, and it did not have to be Christmas, but I just thought of this this afternoon. I really should share this because mine happens to be Christmas, and so we did this project. Like I said, it was a bit of a mystery as we were working along, and most of the people that were playing this with me were actually very, very much beginners. And so we did, these are little half inch logs on our log cabin. So they started out as an inch and then now they're obviously just, well, yeah, just a half inch now. But then we had some other blocks, happened to be a nine patch that we put together. And then you can see it just makes this fun little design going across. And we have simply done just an X through these blocks, but that was even easier because we started down here in the very corner and just stitched through this way. And then we would come here and stitch up that way. So it wasn't like we were just doing an X in each block. And then you probably recognize some of these other designs. This was one where many of the people actually did some mini spin effects designs. Now on that one, I've just used the spin effects four and used the point out and so in the center is where I rotate it. And that's what I did on all of mine. But as I said, a lot of people use the mini spin effects in here and it was really, really pretty. And then out here on the edge, we simply used in this narrow border, our um, scallop or our clamshell template to do that design. And then the out, far, out in the farthest border here, that was done with using our six inch spiral. Now it wasn't the whole thing because as you can see, it's only that tall there, but we used the six inch spiral to do that. So we had a lot of fun doing this particular quilt. It's one of those that, like I said, it was a bit of a mystery when they started and um, just was a fun, could be a table runner, could be, you know, a mat for on your mantle or whatever. And again, just a kind of a little sampling of two simple blocks, a log cabin and a nine patch that we put together. And so, so that tell me about I, where did that happen at? Was that on a Facebook live? It was actually, I think it was like a year ago. Um, I'm almost actually almost two years ago now. It was like in, in April of 2020, oh, I really? think is when it was. Okay. So it's a long time ago. But I just remembered like this afternoon that I had this um, as far as, and it was beginners. I mean, they were very, very basic in their ruler work. And um, so it was just one of those things that we just kind of did. We all know that last year on March 14th, the world changed. And so we just did this right away in April and they got it done. And some of them had spring fabrics and summer and fall. And it was just so many different varieties and it was a lot of fun. So yeah, that was a fun little starter project. And then I'm gonna show them what we just finished this afternoon, Stacy. Okay. And this was one that we just did about an hour ago. And this is done with the ovals templates. And it's kind of a reverse template, but everybody kind of said, well, it's just applique. Because what we did is we we um, drew around on our template fuse um, our different 
pieces here and then fused them in place and then stitched inside here. So if I hold this up close, you can see there's the stitching on the glitter fabric. There's the stitching on that one. So it was using our templates to create our shape. And then we just simply laid this down on top of it afterwards and then stitched around it to stitch it down. And you can see down here in the corner, we use the oval. So this is a pillow that was very quick and easy to do because we did it as an envelope pillow. So it's just overlapping so that you can put your pillow form in there and you've got a pillow but you know what it doesn't have to be you could put a candle here and now you got a candle mat so the same finish will do you good for each one of those so those were a couple of the projects but then i also wanted to share this one some of you have seen because i recognize your names you were with me last saturday night and so this is that kitchen stool that some of you have been asking about because you weren't with us and you saw it on the Westerly by Me site. And so what we did here, and you can go back and watch that as always, but this piece right here, we did with fusible on the back, but not the lining, because you can see it doesn't stitch through there. So we did all of our decorative work on this piece. You can see I used my uh, form for the tree, the, the template for the tree, and did the tree there on that piece that says joy. We used decorative stitches from our machine. We did the diamond cross hatching. And let's see, over here, I even attempted, I'm glad you can't see the back, but I even attempted free motion inside that star. So believe it or not, the ladies liked it because they said it looks like tangled up light bulbs. So, you know, hey, I think I, I achieved what I wanted to. It's tangled up light bulbs. Here's another decorative stitch that we just went one way and then turned around and came back the other way so that it almost looks like it's circles put together. And then we did some straight stitching in here, a decorative stitch there, and up here was an ornament. But I found out when I tried this on, and those of you that were with me, you might have found this out too, that when I tried it on, it was too wide in the back. So I just took the back four inches. So in other words, there's the center, two inches this way and two inches that way. And I folded it together and stitched it. So on the back of my neck, it's narrower. But what this is, is when we get it turned and lined, then down at the bottom, before we stitch this shut, we cut a kitchen towel in half and we gathered it up and pleated it, put it in there and then stitched through that. And I will tell you, this is called a kitchen stole because the definition of a stole is something that a lady wears around her neck, usually a fur. Well, this isn't a fur, but this is much more useful than a fur because when you're getting ready for your, your kitchen dinner, whatever, you can now have your towels right around your neck so you don't have to keep hunting them. And one of the things that I told the ladies the other night is this would be perfect when you're in canning season also because you could put this around your neck and you know if you can if you've ever canned in your life you know you're always hunting a dishcloth to um, tighten up the jars or take them out of the canner or whatever so this is one of those fun little gifts that i simply used up my uh, scraps from one of my other projects i just cut these like two or three inches by about six, because I think when this is done, this is five. Yeah, it's five inches. So we started with six. And so this again, you can watch it. It's over on the So Steady Facebook page. And I believe it's gonna be on YouTube also. And so this is just called a kitchen stole. So I'm putting this in the mail tomorrow to my sister-in-law because we're going there for Christmas. And now she'll have it to, you know, when she's preparing. So anyway it was a lot of fun and you can make one too for any season that you want i love that towel one. i think that could be such an easy little project yep. something that anyone could do so just as a reminder you can find all of these amazing projects on the so steady facebook page 
or most of them, I think, um, were, with the exception of the um, pillow form slash um, table square, um, you should be able to follow find those right there on Facebook. So I will go ahead and post a link to the Facebook page where you're going to find so many of our um, tutorial videos and lives that have been done really since the beginning of time because we we don't take off any of those um and hopefully you'll be able to go ahead and start digging in and and if you have a moment where you want to just get some extra then this is a, a really really great place to go and be able to see more of that so i was thinking that maybe this is time to do our our, our first giveaway of mini today um, again, because we like to do these as live giveaways, um, I'm going to go ahead and ask all of you to share with us of the video of the projects that Donnell just did, which one of those would you love to see um, maybe again um, or be able to uh, watch on the So Study University as long as life would have it and you're content. <laughs> Tell us what, which one of those projects was your favorite. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and use that as our first giveaway winner here. So I'm going to pull something off of our tree because this is our gift giving tree. And guys, I have to empty this tree today of all of its goodies. So those are how many um, winnings we're going to have today. So let's go ahead and start with this feels like a really appropriate starting point. How about the SoBiz ruler? Let's start well, there you with go. an amazing SoBiz ruler. This is a centering ruler. Hey, Donnell, can you tell us all the awesome things that you can do with this and why, why you were insp inspired to create this ruler? I sure can. And I will tell you, it's one of those that I find new um, things every day because today as I was doing my project, I was showing how to measure to get a nice square. So in other words, before this was cut down to size, I wanted to make sure I was from the dead center out a distance. And so I put this line, I didn't the first time, but the second time it made so much sense. I had not erased all those lines. So I put the center of this line right down the center. And of course the end right here. So you can see this is centered on that. And we were measuring at nine and a half. So it was off of this edge. So I actually had a mark here and a mark over there. So I had my two marks, two points make a straight line. And I moved it. I repeated that process, was out here on this edge, nine and a half, and did the same thing. And then all we had to do was set our crosshair square on here and line up these points and these points and then we had the perfect corner and we just kept doing that the four times until we got around there now that's just one of the things i use it for you will notice i've got stable tape on mine and i have this at a quarter of an inch so when i'm doing some long seams or long template quilting in a seam or away from i can use it that way the main reason that I designed this is because I had a 12 and a half inch ruler that looked just like this, but I didn't have these on the side here. And so I just took my marker and I made a zero and then counted out this way and counted out that way. And the reason for that is when I'm trying to find the center of something, maybe it's a border or maybe it's there's a block here and I want to find the exact center of that block so I can put my border dead center. This allows me to do that because, you know, sometimes when you make a block that's supposed to be four inches, that means it should be from here to here because my zero's in the center. But sometimes it's just a little shade smaller. So this allows me to kind of center this just by little teeny bit on each side and I still know my exact center. And then of course we've got our eighth and our quarter down here. And you know, it's just, there's so many ways that I can use this um, when I'm, I'm actually working with my um, ruler quilting and other types of quilting too. And the perfect two inches makes it nice to be able to have this so that if you're, let's say you're doing some cross hatching and you need to get it set up, 
you've got this. If you're doing it an inch apart, you can draw your second line and just, just so many things you can use it for. So the funny thing is, I'll tell you, we could do a whole contest, Stacy, on what color this is. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Because people like to call say, it different names. Oh, yeah. Some say it's green and some say it's yellow. So oh, no, see, it's that's so of... funny because the other day I was trying to decide what the what what color that was too, and I was calling it lime green. Yeah, but you're right. I think that um, I was debating on what color it was at yep. the same time. <laughs> I know, and it's just funny because I uh, have people say, "You know, your yellow ruler," and I'll say, "Oh no, you mean my green ruler? No, yeah. it's your yellow ruler." <laughs> Exactly. Well, um, I am taking everybody over to the amazing SoBiz Ruler. It's part of our um, 12 Days of Stocking Stuffers, which means uh, through the end of the year, you'll have the opportunity to get 20% off if you purchase three or more items on that page. So you could get one of these amazing SoBiz rulers. You could get uh, maybe some extra stable tape, uh, maybe one of those awesome smartphone stands and be able to get an extra discount um on that tool so i have picked an official winner for the sobiz ruler and um the winner for that ruler is going to be renee dawn you are the lucky winner of the sobiz ruler go ahead and email us at so study to be able to uh claim your prize that's info at so study.com and uh we'll go ahead and get that mailed out to you so um, here's the next thing that we're going to give away today, Donnell. Oh, the kitty. The kitty, I guess. The kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> she heard about the centering ruler and she got really excited. Yeah. So this is something that's kind of different. And I don't even know that you have these right there in your studio. Um, and this is not one of our super deals, but I have it hanging on the tree, which means I have to give it away, right? Yes. Uh, this is... One of these amazing ATA handles. Do you have any of those in your studio, Donnell? I do not. So the ATA handles are something that um, we actually highly recommend um, for, uh, they work great for long arm, but they're also great for people that might have a little bit less mobility with their hands, maybe some arthritis, that sort of thing. It's kind of an extra option for gripping the tool. Um, I know that Kate sometimes uses some of them in some of her um, education and her lives, but this is going to be our next giveaway today. We're gonna do some ATA handles. So let me see if I can find that right here on our so study page um we'll take you out to the page as we see it search for that this is our add handles and when i search on the so study for something i will often um just go straight to the search function and i'll type in something really simple like one word to try to find what i'm looking for why because i don't know exactly how it's going to be spelled and the more words the less likely i'm going to find it <laughs> So you can see that on the screen now, it comes in a pack of six different handles, two large, two medium, two small. Regular price on that is $12. And we're gonna be picking a winner for the out of handles now. So let's go ahead and see if there's any people out there that definitely would love to have some out of handles. Uh, maybe they know someone that could use them or they could use them themselves. Um, let's go ahead and go with um how about paula davis paula davis you are the lucky winner of the out of handles so um hopefully that's something that you find useful and um again claim the prize by emailing us here at info at some study hey stacy yes paula davis wrote on the thing i want those so she got them how are you serious that? No, that's great. Paula, and, it's and because Renee, you said you wanted them. You know, Renee, all, that's all you guys have to say. You just have to say, I want those and you'll win. Yeah. No. So <laughs> I have to tell you, as you were talking, Renee said that she already has the ruler. So we should give it to someone else. Oh, well, let's pick so, someone new then. All so right. So how about so, we do this? What uh, else have we got we could give Renee? Oh, well, um, let's see. I don't know what Renee doesn't have, but I'm going to give her something that I think everybody could use a couple of in their home. And I'm going to, I actually want you 
to guess what I'm going to be talking about here, Donnell. What well, do you it's think truly a guess because I didn't see a couple of in their home. Ruler stickers? No. No. This is all give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint. This is something, and this is for all of you. You guys can play this game with me too. This is something that will help you watch us better. Oh, 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 I pick me. I got it. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to give Renee one of our amazing smartphone stands. Don't worry. I think we have one more of those to give away today. So, uh, but Renee, we're going to trade out your prize with these amazing smartphone stands. And then we're going to pick another winner for the Slowbiz Ruler. So going back to the, to the winners here, let's go ahead and see see who we can pick for the SoBiz Ruler. Um, how about we pick Linda? Oh, oh, sorry. My thing is going in that toes. Donnell, I'm going to let you pick. Okay. You're All picking right. this time. I'm going to flip this up and down and stop it. <laughs> on Catherine Clausen. Catherine Clausen. Catherine Clausen it is. All right. Catherine Clausen, you are the lucky winner of the SoBiz Ruler. All right, so let's head over to the tree and see what else we have over here. Um, oh, we have a little ball. No, I'm kidding. We won't give that a ball away. We'll keep that in our holiday storage. Um, how about we give away, and these again are on our 12 days of holidays. Um, and so let's head back over to our 12 days of holidays. And I believe you're going to find these on the stocking stuffer page. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose these. This is going to be our next giveaway. Um, echo guides. If you have not gotten these yet, um, they're going to expand all that you can do with your rulers. They work great for some inside designs. They work great for some outside designs, but basically you have the ability to expand your designs with your echo guides. Hey, Donnell, do you have a favorite ruler that you do with echo guides? You know, I have so many that I use with the Echo Guides, but one of the ones that I use a lot, honestly, is my Echo Guides for doing my cross hatching. Oh, because okay. if I'm doing cross hatching, and you know what? I can show you guys this because this little project would be better with some cross hatching anyway. So, how about I do that? We got time, Stacey? Yeah, let's do it. Show us some Echo Guide stuff. Okay, so we're going to go. You would think, ladies, that I picked that to be dead center because it's pretty much dead center. So anyway, what I'm going to do here is I am going to take and make my lines across because I want them to be centered. And all I need are my diagonals for what I'm going to do today. I am not doing the diamonds. I'm just doing the squares. And so all I'm going to have to do with this, I took my piece off. So here's how you can use your echo guides and make it so much easier to do that ruler work. So let's go ahead and quickly here Look change at her. this She's out. She's just flying. This is how quickly you can set your machine up for ruler work, guys. Yep. And my, I think my machine sees me coming and says, oh, here she comes again. What is she going to do first today? Oh. So I tightened that up. I'm going to set this in here. In my first line, I want stitched right on the line that I drew. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this right here in the corner and this, the edges are going to get stitched off. So we're going to call them or cut off, excuse me. We're going to call that a margin. So I'm simply going to put my foot down, bring my thread up like I always do. And I won't have to secure it in any way simply because of what project I'm going to be making here for you in just a minute. So I'm going to get my spacing gauge and did I just see you bring your thread up in like a way that was as fast as I've ever seen? Kind of, probably. I'll show wow. you. Wow. 
So what I'm going to do here is this is a quarter of an inch right there from my needle to the edge. So I'm just going to set my spacing gauge there so it's a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to stitch that line. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that thread. And yes, I'm using blue thread. So I'm going to come to this corner. What's nice is you can really see it. Yeah. And it's going to match what's on the front. And I'm just doing what I call flossing that to pull that Look out from that. underneath That's there. That's so cool. And I'm going to start because that edge is off just a little bit. And I'm going to lower my foot just a smidge because I don't have a very thick batting here. Okay. Oh, I know what the problem is. Wrong ruler. That one does not. Yeah, I was like, she doesn't have any stable tape stable on there, tape guys. On there. She's, she's going to yeah, struggle a little. It's kind of it's kind of like, oh, well, sir, that makes a lot of difference. So now I'm going to put on here my three quarter inch echo guide. So I've got the X drawn and now I won't really need to use my um, spacing gauge. So there's a half inch, there's three quarters of an inch. You can see it right there. And this is one inch. Now, if you're wondering what this is, you can get these about anywhere anymore. These are just magnets on the end, and this is a silicone stretchy band, okay? And the thing with it that's nice is this just stretches and it fits right on there so I can keep my echo guides real easy and I can get them off by just stretching that band. And I just have it hooked up here on my light that has a magnet on it so that everything stays where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to take this echo guide, turn it over so I can read the number because the top opening is bigger than the bottom opening. So for that reason, if you try this on your foot and it doesn't stay, then all you need to do is turn it over and it'll probably go on the other way. Just a little trick I learned. And so now this edge guiding along the edge that I just stitched is going to be a one inch. Or it's actually in this case, it's three quarters of an inch. And this but is, is it three quarters of an inch from the needle? Yes. Oh, it's three quarters of an inch from I the needle. Three quarter inch echo guide meant that it was three quarters of an inch from the edge of the foot. Nope. It's three quarters okay. from the needle. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna have to figure out too much. I'm gonna kind of dance out here in this margin. And when I come up to this touch in that line, I just move my ruler over so it's on the line. And now I can go back the other way. I'm back up here. I come down that margin when it touches there. Wow. That is so fast and easy. Yep, it's a lot faster than uh, some of the other ways. I mean, you can do it a, with measuring each time, but this way I can use this to measure actually. And so now I'm at this edge. I'm just gonna go back in the margin to go to that line. And now we're gonna cross stitch, cross hatch down through there. So if you've ever wondered, would I use those echo guides? I use them in a lot of other ways too, but this is probably the one I use the most. And ironically, I can pretty much do my cross hatching faster this way than if I drew lines and stitched on them with my regular walking foot or my Oh yeah. feet or whatever. This is like the fastest cross hatching I've ever seen. Yeah. So right now I'm at that edge. I've got that corner there. To, oops, I could have just came this way. I didn't even realize that. I mean, you so, were just kind of doing half half the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can go ahead and give that away to somebody lucky. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So now's the time. 
If you are excited about getting some Echo Guides in your little treasure chest of tools at home, then tell us now. And we are going to pick our lucky winner. And the lucky winner is going to be Fran Hunt. You are the lucky winner of the Echo Guides. Perfect. And Fran, I'll tell you, you're going to find a lot of other ways. You can make take your, your two-inch circle from your sampler set, and you can take it clear down to be in like a little tiny pebble by putting that one inch in there. I wouldn't do it a lot, but I certainly do use the half inch and the quarter inch inside there quite a bit. That big one is really a little bit difficult to even size up, but just like that, I think I've covered the whole thing here now. Okay, so, so I'm picking another thing from our holiday deals page. And that thing is something that Donnell showed how important it was as she was starting to do her cross hatching this just now. And that is the amazing stable tape. Stable tape is going to grip your fabric and keep your ruler in place as you are doing any projects. Um, so definitely a necessity on rulers. Would you agree, Donnell? Yeah, you saw me kind of fluctuate. I'm trying to find my spots. I didn't worry about it, but right there, there's where I kind of skipped up and didn't do a very good job of it just because I didn't have that on there. So got to have stable tape everybody who doesn't want some more stable tape right <laughs> all right so we're going to go ahead and go with the amazing stable tape as our next giveaway today so let's go ahead and pick our winner for the stable tape and this is going to be a five pack of stable tape um we're going to pick the winner debbie white as the stable tape winner and again, everyone, if you're the lucky winner, then go ahead and email us um, at info at so Steady, and we will send the prize your way. All right, so let's go ahead and head back over to the tree and pick our next prize. So I think that the next prize is going to be another thing that everybody could use an extra one of. And we're going to make that one of the amazing Sarah Diddy Notions necklaces. You know, these are things that you can just keep extra tools on right there in your sewing room. This is an orange color. You may or may not have this color already in your box of treasures. I don't even think Donnell has the orange uh, Sarah nope. Diddy Notions necklace. I so, don't. Um, Donnell, you want to show them how to use it? Yeah, so this is the little piece that is going to come off. This is the necklace part. It was on here like this, and then I just took it off. And so I usually have these scissors on my blue one since it matches so nice. So I thought I'd put them back. So all I do is put that through one of the handles there and then go like through here. And I wouldn't recommend your scissors being on here unless they're like mine, and that's the kindergarten scissors, okay? They don't have a point, and mine stay closed. So... You know, it's one of those things that now I've got that on there. Many times I have my spacing gauge on one. And, you know, there's just so many different things. Some people have seam rippers that have a, a, an attachment on the end that can go through this. And so they put their seam ripper. Obviously, again, it's one that has a cap on it, so it's closed. But very, very handy and um, useful to keep track of. And honestly, even if you don't have it around your neck all the time, it's easy to look over and see, oh, there's my blue notions necklace. I know it's got my scissors on it. And so it does make it very, very easy to keep track of everything. Excellent. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just go all the way to the top because this is one of those tools that I think everybody could use. So we're just going to pick it randomly from all of our participants today. And I'm going to give this one away to Linda Martindale. 
lucky winner of another notions necklace i'm pretty sure linda's probably already got one or two of these in her drawer of goodies but she will be the lucky winner of the orange one today all right so i've got a new tool that i don't even know that donnell has hanging out in her sewing room there and this is going to be a new spacer tool new but not new but not i should say um this is actually a spacer tool by um the same uh company that uh we make the or that we have the serenity notions necklace with this is the serenity spacer tool and what's cool about this one is it's got a couple of extra measure oh donnell look at you <laughs> it's got a couple of extra measurements on it show us what it's got donnell well it has all of the saying that we have there's a quarter there's a half there's an inch and there's I guess that's an eighth, an eighth, okay? But it also has three eighths, five eighths, and three fourths. So it does have a lot of the other measurements on it, okay? So that is the Sarah Diddy spacing tool. The Sarah Diddy spacing tool, I will go ahead and post a link to um, with a couple extra measurements on it and something that you can absolutely attach to that notions necklace. Let's go ahead and pick a winner. Donnell, do you want to put, do the, the drawing on this one? I will. And guys, I'm closing my eyes. And let's see. Open them up. Cindy Shelley. Cindy Shelley is the lucky winner of the Sarah Diddy Spacer tool. All right, Cindy. And... Excellent. So we've got some duplicates that I have to give away. So um, going back to the amazing Echo Guides that we gave away a little bit ago, we've got another one on the tree. So we've got two winners today because I'm emptying the tree, guys. We got to get this tree. We got to put the ornaments away, and that means we got to send them out to all of you. <laughs> so we're gonna pick another Echo Guide winner. Now, um, let's go ahead and close my eyes. We're gonna get back to the Echo Guide section where we had some people that were kind of excited about it. All right, the lucky winner of the Echo Guides. We're gonna go with Rhonda P. Rhonda P. Just the initial P. You are the lucky winner of the Echo Guides. Hoping that that's something that you're excited about. Because we want everybody to be excited about winning their prize, right? All right. So heading back over to the tree, we have got another, ooh, a couple more things that are kind of duplicates to what we've already done today. Um, this is a new one. Let's talk about this. This is one of Donnell's favorite tools. So we're going to do another guessing game here, guys. So this is another one of Donnell's favorite tools. If anybody um, knows Donnell at the beginning of most any Ruler Work for Beginners demos, this is something that she shows off. It's something that's not Ruler Work. And yet it still does some really cool stuff. Donnell, can you guess? I figured it might be a clover marker. Keep going. Keep going. You oh. do this. Oh, we do have a lucky winner already. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I think it's Jane. Jane, you are the lucky winner of guessing what we've got here, which is the Circle Maker. This is our circle and straights tool, comes with a mat and of course um, the tool inside. And I don't know if Donnell has one handy that she can show off. But yeah, I was gonna this, I was gonna do a demo on it. So I think you should. All right. So real quickly here, I'll take off my mat. Anybody that has the holes in their table can do the same thing I'm gonna do with their circle sewing tool. So I'm going to lay my mat over here on the side 
And I am going to take the circles and straights tool, which is a similar type of mat. It has the backing on it. So I've taken that off and I'm gonna put this in line directly to the left of my needle, straight out from where my needle is centered because we're using a straight stitch. And now what I'm gonna do with this one, I need to make a circle that's five and a half inches. So this is the other part of the tool and this don't lose it because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point out to you that right here there's an etching and there's an etching right here. And that's showing you the center of that, well, it's like a thumbtack that's embedded. And I want that to be at five and a half. And I need for this to be lined up dead center. So you can see I need to move this a little bit to get that straight. And on the back of what I'm doing, I have already marked my center. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm just gonna place that right in that center. Remember I had marked that before. Now I've already put fleece down on it and I already quilted it. So um, it's got a little bit of a body to it already. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a little mug rug. Oh, how fast. fun is that? Hey, Donnell, yes. while you're doing that, someone asked a good question. They said they just got theirs, and when they stuck it down to the mat, um, they think that maybe they didn't release it right because some of the yellow came off on the tool from the mat. Yeah. When you put it down, you noticed I hardly pushed down on it because this thing is so super, super sticky. So when you first get it, you don't hardly push down on it at all. Now, when I go to take mine off, I'll show you a little secret there as to what you're gonna do. So I now have here a six inch square that I have put on the back of here, a piece of fleece. I did my cross hatching. And now this piece, this is six inches across here. And I made this so that it is Actually, it was three and a half inches. Now, I'm not going to need all of this on the top because what I did was I put this piece that is two and a half inches and it's folded in half and I stitched it on with a quarter inch. I press that so it's going to look like this. Okay. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn it right side down. And this one goes on first. Now, I want it to be a little bit above the half point where this is that would be right at the half point so i'm pulling it up just a little bit above half and i'm going to put that in place and then i'm going to take this piece and i'm going to overlap it right up to where that little white line is and put that there now this is sticking off about an inch and a half down here it doesn't matter i'm going to cut it off anyway so now that I've got this all set, I'm gonna go ahead and lower that foot and I can put this on so I don't get stuck with it. And as I said, if you have holes in the table, you do the same thing just like this. So we're almost back. You can see it lined up just perfectly. I've overlapped it, so I really don't need to reverse. Although I can, it'll go in reverse too. And I'm just going to cut that. And just that quick, I can now take my pinking shears. And I do recommend the pinking shears because it makes it so that it turns very easily and doesn't have that extra bulk in there. And we don't have to do any hand sewing at all to this because once we turn this, it's going to overlap and I can either stitch in the ditch or I can stitch above that. So here we go with turning this and turning that. And I can either take my fingers around there or take my point turner and creaser. And because I've got that on the back, I've got some stability there. 
And all I need to do is press this down and then I can top stitch right in there. And so I've got now my little mug mat already made. Now to go back to this, when I take this off, I pull my mat up and then I just slowly peel this back. Now your mat's not harmed by missing your yellow, but I totally understand because I have a mat that that happened to also before I did it just like I showed you there. Okay, so it will work. You just don't want to push this down too much. And, you know, I will say the other trick that you've showed that has worked really well for me is that spin-off trick. And I will admit that my tool has been used quite a bit, so it's not quite as sticky as when it once was. But spinning it left or right tends yeah. to release it really easily for me. So if you have this down here, what she's talking about is you can just kind of push it from the top and the bottom to the side and then it'll come right off. So, yeah. And then you want to make sure you do not lose this. Now, if this gets to the point where it won't stick, then all you need to do is rinse it in warm water and it will stick again. And just so you know, those pieces there are the yellow from one of my previous mats because it came off and I have even, um, you know, done this over and over and over, and I still have a very, very sticky back on that. So the straights part I need to show you too is, let's say you wanted to do a seam that was five eighths of an inch. You can line this up right here with this five eighths, and now we've got a perfect five eighths inch seam. So that would be your straights part. So love the circles and straights. I love it in my table. But I will tell you the one here is going to give me more sizes because you can see my table ends right there. So that's my smallest. But on my mat, I can use this clear up to like right in there and do super tiny circles, which I can't get with this. So if you're thinking, and I will say oh, I've been using my circles and straights tool a ton for the straights lately. Yeah. Exactly. And it works out super well. Um, so we did pick a winner right out of the gate on that one. Why? Because she guessed first, guys. Jane Sally Tutton was the guesser of what I was talking about. And sometimes it's fun to play the guessing game too, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we do have some more prizes though. So believe me, we're not through. Um, so, cause I got to empty the tree off, right? So we have, we've got another stable tape for all of you. I will say that I wanted to, um, take you over to our, um, uh, circles and straights tool on that. We now have options for this. You can buy the mat only. If you just care about that, maybe you want to get another mat. You can purchase and on a mat only it's just $20. You can purchase the tool and that combination together. With that, you've got $35 and you can buy the tool only. And with that, it's just $20. So you've got a few options on that page if you decide that that's something you want to get. And just a reminder, that is part of our uh, gifts under $50. So um, if you decide that you need to get a few of the things that are on this page, then you can get 20% off of the whole order uh, if you buy three or more. So that I just posted a link to. And um, so now it's time for our next giveaway. And we've got another ditto giveaway. This is another item that we have already announced today. Um, and the hint is it's super grippy. It's our stable tape. So we've got another five pack of stable tape that we need to give away to some lucky winner. So I will go ahead and do some scrolling. And um, someone asked earlier, how do you get into the drawing? Well, all you have to do is make lots of comments um, and let us know that you want to win. And then we will get you in the drawing. So I'm just doing some scrolling and I'm going to pick the lucky winner of Fran Hunt. Has Fran Hunt already won today? That name is so familiar to me right now. I don't think Fran Hunt has won yet today. Fran, you are the lucky winner of the extra stable tape because you have not won already. So um, 
lucky winner of stable tape we've got one more prize here um uh, actually i have a couple more things on my desk so i might as well give those away too right <laughs> we're clearing out stacy's holiday office um so fran hunt you are the lucky winner of the stable tape and then let me see if i can pick our next winner and the next winner is going to be winning something we haven't shown off yet today so donnell these yes. are kind of like the echo guides in shape stitching line disc focus. stitching line disc you got it so stitching line discs are our next giveaway and these are really cool little tools that allow you to draw out your designs so i'm um, taking you over to our um 12 days of holidays um the stitching line discs are part of a kit that we've put together called our new sketch pad and design guide so with this sketch pad, uh, you're getting 25 sheets um, of design space that is 17 by 22 overall size. The grid is 17 by 17. You have an eighth inch grid. And with that, you're getting one of our So Steady pins and one of the stitching line discs, which you can see right there on the screen. Um, and these little discs come in multiple hole sizes. And the idea for the multiple hole sizes is that you can use different instruments with them. So Donnell, show us how you are gonna draw some stuff with the stitching line. Okay, so I have my drawing pad over at the drawing table. I don't have it right here, but I'm gonna show you, this is one of the stitching line discs, and this is the one that I would use with this particular pen. And you can see, I think, that it, the pen just barely goes down through there. And so that's what we want to be able to work with our template. Now I'm gonna give you a hint, and that is if you are going to use a template like I've got here that it doesn't matter whether it's this way or this way, turn it so your stable tape is up. So that way this is going to work a whole lot easier to be able to do this. Now what I'm gonna show you here is just a little variation. You see this etch line there and that one there. They're directly across from each other. Now, if I was going to do this, a lot of these, I would probably put a ruler sticker right in both those spots. But now I can just line that up, that right there with that spot right there. And what I'm going to show you is how I can create a different border just by working it out on paper with my stitching line disc. So I'm lining that up each time. So this was my oval template, but look what kind of a cute border I can create by just using that. So when I now go to stitch it, I know that four of those from start to finish, are going to be, it's like three and a 16th inch. So if I wanted to know, is this gonna fit into something, I can, you know, figure it out because I know that four of them are, and some of you are like me, I don't let that kind of thing worry me or stop me or slow me down. I'm just gonna find out where the middle is and I'm gonna work to the right and then I'll come back and work to the left and I'll just have that figured out how I'm going to come out symmetrical. But this just shows you a different way to get something from a template that you already have. You could do the same thing with a template going this way. So you can see how I can just decide where I want that and how I want this. I'm only going to get part of it, but you're going to see what I'm talking about how you get these fun little things by overlapping um, in different ways. So that's a stitching line disc. I always jokingly say they send you eight so you can lose seven and still have one to work with. But make sure, 
you keep uh, the one that fits the pen you use the most. So I love it. So I've got the sketch pad that I'm going to go ahead and put on as a link to right now. Some people were saying that they absolutely love that sketch pad. That is um, also part of our um, 12 gifts under 50. So that has the opportunity to get 20% off on that. The stitching line disc will go ahead and post a link to as well. Um, and then um, I want you to pick the winner, Donnell. I want All you right. to do it. I love to do that. So eyes closed. If my cat was over here. I would pull him in. And the winner is Opal Rupp. Oh, Opal, Opal you Rupp. are the winner of the stitching line disc. Excellent. All right, just a reminder, email us at info at so steady to claim your prize. And I do have a few more giveaways here. I just keep finding stuff. So, I mean, I got to clean out this office. So the um, price that I've got here is a colorful tool. We just recently started really branching out and doing new colors for this tool. So this is our red spacing gauge. Who doesn't have one of these awesome tools yet? Um, uh, the spacing gauge again is just one of those things that doesn't hurt to have some extras of or hanging around the house. And uh, we've got a red one that we want to give one of you. So, um, let's go ahead and see if we can pick a winner here for the amazing spacing gauge. Um, this is one of the Wesley Design spacing gauges. So we've got a few different, um, uh, we've got four different uh, sizes on that. Eighth inch, half inch, quarter inch, and one inch. And the winner is going to be Ike, Ike Johnson, I-K-I-E Johnson. You are the lucky winner of the red spacing gauge. So um, don't worry, guys. If you haven't won yet, we still have a few things that we're going to give away. So Donnell showed us really, really quickly how you can make um, a super easy little mug rug, um, maybe a little little tiny pillow form <laughs> um, for using her circles and straights tool. Now, this is a tool that I think works really great when you're doing some stuff like that because it helps you kind of flatten out all the seams as you're turning that project inside out. So I'm sure that Donnell knows what I'm talking about right now. I think I do. I'm trying to find mine. <laughs> well, I'll show you mine. This okay. is the amazing point turner. This is a two point turner. Um, it's got two different, it's got a um, two points on it. One that's more of a rounded point, one that is more of a, um, a tip. And so we have an amazing point turner. We also have these available on our So Steady website. And the point turner is a great way to go ahead and be able to kind of get your, all of your goodies going, uh, turned inside out and keep them all flat. So the point turner is going to be our next giveaway today. So let's go ahead and see who wants a point turner. Who wants a point turner? <clears throat> so Donnell, you're going to sew that down just because, you know, you don't need to make that something that you would open up, right? Right. So I'm just going to stitch it down here. Okay. So picking a winner for the point turner, we're going to go with Carol Stevenson. Do we have a, a winner for the point turner? Does Carol, I don't think Carol's won yet today. Carol Stevenson, you are the lucky winner of the point turner. Oh, I have such a pile of giveaways here, guys. Um, <clears throat> this is not even a tool that we have on our page, but I just decided it doesn't have to be something that we have on our page to give it away, right? This is something that we got from one of our partners um, in the industry, and I thought it was kind of a cool tool. Um, but to be honest with you, I don't feel like I need these because um, the way our cutting system works at so Study with our patchwork tools, um, our tools have a, a bar on them that when you 
press down on the clear section of our patchwork tool, it grips the fabric really well. Um, but there are other patchwork tools out on the market um, that maybe could use some extra gripping power. And so this tool is going to be something that you might want to use for that. So this is a tool by Eversone called a ruler grip. So I'm going to go ahead and give that away as um, one of our final giveaways here today. And it's a ruler grip by Eversome. Um, and again, it just grips your ruler um, so you can easily kind of get that done. So let's go ahead and pick a winner of the ruler grip. And that's going to be... Debbie Meyer, you are the lucky winner of the ruler grip. So let's see here. Do I have anything else to give away today? Let's see. All right. Um, I'm thinking my final item that I want to give away took me to that place where I had to figure out what color your tool was this week. And that was because we were giving this away in our 12 days of bonus deals um, for our stocking stuffers. We were giving this away one day with the purchase of your SoBiz ruler. Okay. And this was a new shade of our spacing gauge. And oh, we cool. were thinking what color, what color this was, what color. And so yellow, that kind of makes sense, but we called it lime green. You so, know what? It's funny because somebody said a color named Citron and I never heard that. Oh, that's different too. <laughs> so we're going to do our spacing gauge as the final giveaway today. And it's going to be the yellow lime green Whatever color you choose, you get to pick what you name it. <laughs> Citron sounds, oh, we have a chartreuse. Someone said chartreuse. That's a fun color. So I think you should pick this because this is your color you brought into our lives, Donnell. Okay. Here we go. And the winner is Joyce Hatzel. Joyce Hatzel is the winner of the yellow, green, lime, green, chartreuse, citron, spacing gauge. Chartreuse, citron. Congratulations, Joyce, and to all of our lucky winners today. And again, we appreciate you joining us, and we wish you all a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Um, we won't be back next week. So I guess we should be wishing you a very, very, very happy new year as well. But guess who's going to be doing a, a super fun New Year's Eve event for everyone? Donnell. <laughs> so Donnell is going to be doing our New Year's Eve uh, real work event. And she is going to be um, doing a, a class from, I think, was it 6 p.m.? It starts at 6 p.m. your time, Donnell? Yep. 6 p.m. Eastern? 6 to 10. 6 to 10 Eastern time, 3 to 7 Pacific time. And I look for all of you to be there. I'm going to tell you if you can't stay for all of it or you can't join us at the beginning, it doesn't matter. You'll get to watch the rest. You'll get to see the half or whatever you missed. And Stacy told me how many we have registered already, and it's super, super exciting. I'm so thankful you guys are able to join us. And remember, if you want to sew along with me doing the template quilting, you need to buy the pattern. It's a digital download off of Sew Steady site, and you need to get your project put together because I'm going to do some simple putting together, but I'm not going to sew the whole thing together because it would take too much time. But if you just want to join us that evening, no problem. You'll be able to learn as we go through it. Most times everybody ends up just watching anyway, and we'll have some fun things like this. We'll have some giveaways too. And so join us next 
Friday evening for our New Year's Eve party where we're going to do Celebration Star. Celebration Star. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to the Celebration Star. But first, I wanted to also um, make sure everybody knew about our 12th day of deal. Today is our 12th day of our Stocking Supper deals. And our bonus deal today is the amazing Grig Lighter. So it's our small Grig Lighter, though. So if you don't already have a small Grig Lighter, which might work on uh, smaller projects or smaller surfaces, then uh, you might consider this. Our bonus deal for that is buy one, get one. So that's lasting for the rest of the day today. Um, and that is going to be your super duper extra special bonus deal. That's our 12th day of bonus deals. So um, we appreciate you all joining us for those throughout our um, holiday season as well. The, the color of that one is orange. And um, again, I just posted a link to that. I'm going to go ahead and post a link to the Celebration Star now as well. Because Stacey. I think Yes. That grid glider is peach. Oh, peach. What color orange, orange around sounds here? Sounds like a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could call it um, another of my favorite tangerine. There you go. There you go. Tangerine. I love that too. Yeah. So the celebration star is the pattern that um, Donnell is going to be selling as an optional. Um, pattern for the uh, New Year's Eve event. And so I'm just going to post a link to that if that's something that you're interested in going ahead and doing the full project with her. Or if you just want to enjoy um, a New Year's Eve event, watching Donnell do another amazing project, then you're welcome to do that as well. Um, and she does include with the free sign up to the class, um, I did post a link to that sign up. She does include um, the menu. So you get a little recipe, some recipes of what she's going to be making with Megan um, in their New Year's Eve event. And then, um, of course, I think that there's some basic supplies that are included in that, too. Sure. But if you are interested in getting the full pattern, then we did post a link to that as well. So again, thank you so much for joining us today for our last All Things Holidays. And we will look forward to um, having you join us again in the new year for um, more amazing education and uh, look forward to maybe even seeing you out and about. Um, we're going to definitely be getting out of the office more in the new year. We've already got some amazing events planned. Uh, we'll be down at Road to California in um, January um, and we're planning on um, Donnell's going to be at multiple shows this next year um, doing the OSQE events. So if you have an OSQE event coming near you, um, I highly recommend you look into it and see if you can sign up for one of Donnell's classes. Isn't that right, Donnell? Yes. And we will be doing um, the full three days of classes. So there'll be a lot of opportunity if you're past the beginner's class, then you can join us for a couple of the advanced classes. Excellent. Well, again, we'll look forward to seeing you either online or at one of those upcoming events that we we're going to be at. Don't forget to check out our events page to learn more about all of the events that we have going around. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the new year if we don't see you sooner. Thanks again, everyone.